This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Today we're taking a look at an epic open source video game all about ponies. And it's the pony shirt, yay! <laughs> and to do so, we'll be introducing the concepts of source code repositories. You've seen us countless times in the past download a zip file or an exe or maybe a tarball in Linux from a website and play whatever's inside. That's great for the most part when a project is finished, but what about when it's a work in progress? Yeah, and it's kind of broken or doesn't quite work right quite yet. Such is the case for Pony Kart. It's a sparkly, happy, fun time racing game all about ponies. And those are the real cartoon ponies, not PWN ponies, even though those are just as awesome. Yay, ponies! Now, there are many different types of software repositories, or repos as they're called. For instance, AD of Dualcore, you guys know him from his past segments, he likes GitHub for sharing his source code as do Darren and Jason with the recently released source code of the USB rubber ducky. Another popular type of repository is called Subversion, or SVN, which is the one that I'm checking out today. It's the same people that brought us the amazingly ubiquitous web server that is called Apache. You know, the one that runs like 90% of the web? Yeah, that one. So it's a pretty robust code. Most importantly, it allows multiple developers, like on a really big project like Firefox, for example, to work all work on the same code base. Essentially, software versioning looks like a tree. So you've got a trunk, which is the main code that all the developers can check out and make modifications to, and it ends up bringing checked back in as branches. So you check it out from the trunk, you develop some sort of code, you bring it back in, and it gets checked in as one of those branches. And there can be several different branches that come off of it. So just like a tree, these branches can branch off again and again until the code is finally refined and basically committed back into the main trunk. At the end of the day, it's all about allowing developers around the world to check out the code, make changes, submit them back in a way that doesn't break the original project as a whole. So while we've been celebrating open source on Hack5 for years, I thought we might use this fun little video game about ponies as an example to introduce SVN. Awesome! So like I said, you can't just head over to their website and download a zip file for the game. You'll need to check it out as a developer. And for that, you'll need Apache Subversion, or SVN, the versioning and revision control system. If you're running Linux, you'll likely already have SVN installed, and if not, the package is usually named Subversion in the major repos. Meaning, if you're on Ubuntu, for example, it's just a matter of typing apt get install subversion. Seeing as this game is Windows only at the moment, we're going to need to jump through a few more hoops to get it actually running on my system. Now, to use SVN on Windows, you need, some, you need to download a subversion client, like uh, this one that I have from Slick. It's called slicksvn.com, and I found it... Where's their website? Over here under downloads, and you just download the Slick SVN for 32 bit or 64 bit. And after you've downloaded it and installed the client, you'll need to update your Windows system path to include Slick. The path variable in Windows basically says that if you're looking for a command or a program in the terminal, check out these folders first. Typically, that path variable, I'm sure you know, includes C colon backslash Windows backslash System32. It's what you've seen like every day, the folder where most of the Windows utilities hang out. So we don't have to type that path every time we run them. By updating the path, we'll be able to run the SVN program anywhere in our system, even though SVN lives in C backslash program files backslash slick SVN. Now to do this, you need to right click on your computer, go to properties under here, choose advanced system settings, go there, and then environmental variables down at the bottom. And then under user variables, for myself, I'm snub, so I go to variables right here. I select path and I click edit. Next to variable value, you need to add semicolon C colon backslash program files backslash slick SVN backslash bin, like I did right here. If you already have some information in that box, just add slick info to the end of the 
end of the line and it won't hurt it or anything. And then you click OK and you close out and you save. So click OK and save all the way back out. And I can close this now, now that I'm done with that part. Now we're ready to finally check out the pony cart game. Yay! First thing you need to do is open your command prompt and make a new folder for the video game. So type mkdir games, enter, and then you type in cd games to change my directory over to the games folder. Now on the pony cart website, you need to click on the SourceForge link, which is over here on the side. Go to SourceForge, and you click copy and paste the code into your command prompt. So I just uh, go down to here where this code is highlighted, pull up my command prompt, and copy it into there. Paste. And then you hit enter, and it should compile the code. Now this may take a couple of minutes, so you know, just sit back and have yourself some sweet tea or some soda or some delicious yingling if you're on the East Coast, you jerks. And once it's done, we can run the game from Windows. So you'll need to open up an Explorer window here by tar typing in start space period. Cool. Okay, so we do the start space period. That opens up my games folder under my username. Now you can go into ponycart backslash trunk under here, backslash ponycart, of course, into the core folder. And you can check out any of the source code for the game by right clicking on any of the CS files that I have in here and opening it in Notepad. I'm not too keen on changing the source, I'd rather play ponycart. So for that, we'll need to compile all the source code into an executable that our system can run. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to look at one. Let's see. Open with Notepad. It's kind of cool just going in here and reading the source code anyway, because you see like all the different comments that the developers left. It's, uh, it's kind of geeky, interesting in some horrible way. But hey, it's enjoyable. Okay, now I need to find the buildrelease.cmd and double click on it. It's a nice little batch file with all the compiler mojo that this, that'll build this release. Let me find that real quick. I have no clue where it is. Oh, there it is, buildrelease.cmd. So I double click on that. Opens up my new command prompt. And it should compile everything for me. There it goes. And this shouldn't take as long as actually downloading the game. So you wait for the game to compile, and then I need to find the .exe to play it. And then we should be good to go. Yeah. OK, press any key to continue. And it closes automatically, so we're good to go. Let's find our video game now. And there's the exe, yes, that is what I was looking for. Now, load up your game, download any kind of extra files you may need from Windows if there are any kind of errors that pop up. Kind of funny, actually, if you run into the second error, which I did, it was, it, it made me laugh. Like, there's missing DirectX DLLs or something like that. Go ahead and download those, and then you can race some My Little Ponies. Awesome! So, I'm going to go to... All right, so we got the game up and running. And I can drive around with my, my little pony in my pony cart, and it's adorable. And somehow, I know one of these buttons will make her, like, crap out little rainbow cubes and rainbow circles. Let me see if I can figure it out. Oh, it's that key. Yes. <laughs> That's so cute. OK, so it's obviously still in development, but I think it's super cute, and yes, it may be a little buggy at the moment, but I think um, the developers are on to something here because I would absolutely love to play all the levels in this, especially if, ooh, they made it multiplayer, and you could choose what color pony and which one you want, like, I don't know, Rainbow Bright or whatever you call it. Either way, 
this video game will make you apparently 20% more cooler. What do you guys think? Email me over at feedback at hack5.org or you can comment in the section below about SVN or Pony Card or pretty much anything that you want. Coming up soon, we'll be answering your viewer questions, but first, let's take a break and then check in with Darren for the nibble. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch the new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. Ben turns an infrawave toaster oven into a solder reflow oven that can be used with PCBs. Stay tuned over at element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's solder oven as well as the latest builds from his show. Time once again for the nibble, and this week Anaphylaxis sends in this. In Bash, you can create a script with input redirection and a limit string. So check this out. If I cat waka waka eof and then that into a file called, we're going to call it addition.sh, now I can create the file right here. It's just like copycon for DOS. So a little shebang slash bin slash bash, and then, whoops, slash bash. And then, I don't know, we're just going to echo like 4 plus 4 into BC or bash calc. And then when I do EOF, it finishes the file so I can chmod it, plus X to make it executable. Now when I run addition.sh, as you might imagine, 4 plus 4 is 8. So, you know, that's fun. Hey, send your nibble over to hack5.org slash nibble. Find out all the great ways you can contribute goodies to us and get goodies to you. I know Shin sends out all sorts of fun goodies for nibble contributors. So anyway, uh, with all that, let's do something like add four and four again. Woo, it's eight. Nice.